hello. This is Dr. Zhang from New Hope Fertility Center. I'm saying hello and a happy new year to you all around the world. I would like to spend some moments to update you all about what is going on in the so-called nuclear transfer technology in human reproduction. So we are in the very exciting moment in the human reproduction. One way we have a crisis of uh, fertility because overall speaking, in many countries, the population actually is a drop. But other way around, we have so many new technology potentially can benefit mankind, not only in fertility, but also in general health. Let's quickly look at what we have done and uh, where we are heading to. So we starting this nuclear transfer technology using the words called her IVF program. And a her IVF program meaning that human egg rejuvenation. We all know in vitro fertilization was successfully performed and the first live birth baby was in 1978. And uh, now it's 2020. So almost 42 years ago. And uh, in 2000, in 1983, we know how to freeze the embryos. And very quickly, 1990, we started doing pre implantation genetic diagnosis. 1992, we had sperm injection into the egg so-called ICSI, and 2016, we had first world live birth baby using three parents baby technology, which basically is a nuclear transfer technology. Between 1992 to 2016, we also have many other exciting developments, such as assist, assisted hatching and testicular sperm fertilization, cytoplasma injection partially to improve mitochondrial DNA quality to have a life to improve the fertility so this is a quick milestone in the human uh, reproduction nuclear transfer technique as the name pointed out it's a transfer of the different kind of a nuclear into a somatic cells. So we can inject the nuclear from the gemino vesicle, mass phase two spindle, and the pronuclear. While we can accomplish pregnancy in almost all different kind of uh, fertility challenges in human. Only one obstacle still there, how to accomplish pregnancy in the couples due to egg quality issue. And most commonly, the issue happen with advanced maternal age. In search for solution, her IVF was invented. For the patient who are 35 years or younger, has done more than three IVF cycles, with cleavage arrest, or have a hard time to make the blastocyst, I'm sure in our practice or in your practice, you all see this kind of patient and clearly have nothing to do with the stimulation protocol, but fundamentally something wrong with egg, mainly in the cytoplasma. This may help from the nuclear transfer to change the environment. 
for the ladies with advanced maternal age due to aging of the cytoplasma may help. Also for the ladies who had a genetic mutation in the tube 8 or in the genetic mutation in the mitochondria, they can all benefit from exchange with the new fresh cytoplasma to accomplish pregnancy. For the lady more than 41 years old, well, can benefit from her IVF. This is open for discussion and is an ongoing research project. Pronuclear transfer was first started in 2003 after fertilization of the fertilization of the egg transfer the male and the female pronucleus. And this has produced a live birth baby in 2017. Second technology is a spindle nuclear transfer. Spindle nuclear transfer, as we displayed before, is a technique to remove the spindle nuclear, which were the DNA genetic material state in the metaphase 2 egg. We can take this spindle nuclear out and transfer to a recipient's egg, which here we label as the donor eggs. The donor's DNA has already been removed. Now you have a reconditioned egg, which we integrated. This is a donor egg cytoplasma with the patient nuclear. This technology has been proved very useful for the lady at ages 35 to 38 with a repetitive in vitro fertilization failure, including cleavage arrest or recurrent implantation failure, even the embryo made to blastocyst. Of course, also including maturation failure, the egg never reached to metaphase two. And this spindle technology is very beneficial and to show how the spindle transfer and this showed the uh, nucleus, pronuclear, male, female pronuclear. Another technology is using polar body. As we know, polar body, generally speaking, in human, it's a degenerating material. And this genetic material carry mirror image DNAs as the spindle DNA in the egg. By doing polar body transfer, we have two applications. This is a polar body. After I spread out, insert into a recipient egg whose polar body um, already been removed and the, the spindle nuclear also been removed. Then we inject the polar body directly into the egg or we can do electrofusion. Now you have this polar body spindle with the DNA integrated into the recipient's eggs. This technique particularly working well with a lady who have an old size maturation failure. And just show you one patient here. We went through one, two, three, four, five, six cycles, and she making larger number of the metaphase two eggs. However, when we check on, on these eggs, they don't have a prop spindle. And after ICSI with a very low fertilization rate, and none of embryo ever make to blastocyst. So we can accomplish about a 27% of blastocyst formation from 
the portal body transfer. And we do have one patient had a normal embryo through this portal body transfer. Unfortunately, it was a chemical pregnancy. The germinal vesicle transfer is a still under investigation. The theory is working very well to take the germinal vesicle from immature patient egg and exchange it with the cytoplasm from the donor then for undergo in vitro maturation and uh, in vitro fertilization and to, to, to obtain the blastocyst stage embryo. However, so far this technique is still not clinically applicable due to three factors. Number one, technically it's very challenging. Number two, we are still not proved that a GV transfer can rescue the spindle anomalies. Number three, still have a maturation issue to overcome. So this is uh, only currently and uh, still it's ongoing research project. So for now, in conclusion, nuclear transfer technology for application in her IVF has great potential and 13 healthy live births has been produced in the world using this technology by transfer spindles and pronucleus. Numerous healthy, normal looking blastocysts have been obtained by doing germinal vesicle transfer and a polar body transfer. However, how efficient and how useful in accomplished pregnancy by polar body and uh, polar body transfer and the germinal vesicle transfer, this open for follow-up results. And also for metaphase two DNA spindle, which our colleagues in Ukraine I also had a healthy results. So this is a metaphase two egg, which is a pearl body here and a spindle here with a, another half of the DNA. However, if we do metaphase one transfer, we can only move this part, or only move this egg part and to do the nuclear transfer. And we will keep you informed the progress of the research. I hope you have enjoyed our webinar and thanks for spending time uh, listen to my uh, presentations and uh, thanks for sending the questions. First question is a great question and this is uh, ongoing questions and we had these questions for the last 100 years since the very first day in virtual fertilization was invented. The question is, uh, uh, do you have a, a efficient way to, to do the in IVM, in vitro maturation of germinal vesicle stage X? As a matter of fact, people remember when uh, our colleague from Korea had a first live birth baby from in vitro mature egg. It was a general prize winning paper in ASRM many, 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 uh, years ago when I was uh, a medical student. So that just tell you how old this question and how important this question. And the answer to this question is yes and no. Yes means that we do have a modified in vitro maturation system, which give us the best uh, in vitro maturation rate so far as compared with all the available culture medium. Uh, the answer is no, meaning that we still need more data to produce more life births to prove that uh, this in vitro maturation system is compatible with the in vivo maturation. But for now, definitely it's not compatible. But our system definitely can produce the uh, best quality GVA and to reach to metaphase two to give the life birth baby. So the system including that uh, the germinal vesicle stage X 
uh, with uh, our targetless cumulus cells, which is a very, very important. And we also need to add in some additive, which will reduce in vitro uh, oxygenation to reduce the oxygen tension, and that will significantly improve the maturation rate. And we uh, compile our data, hopefully we can publish it soon. But the bottom line is that a simple in vitro coaching environment without any cumulative involvement, you will have very poor results, number one. Number two, simply add cumulative cell. It will not work properly either, and you have to have some kind of mechanism to allow this cumulative cell to be attached to the zona to get a good results. So this is a great question, and this question itself, we can have another webinar in six weeks. We're gonna talk about the update on in vitro growth, in vitro maturation of human oocytes for clinical use. Let me just extend this question a little bit further. We have been, and many of our colleagues have been freezing many, many ovarian tissues. So far, the major application of these ovarian tissues is to transplant back to the patient when they're ready to become pregnant after chemotherapy or other kind of uh, treatment. And the problem with that is you may bring the cancer cell back. And so in majority of cases, if for the uncle case, you really ideally want to mature this ovarian tissue to produce eggs and make the healthy life, uh, healthy embryos to transfer back to get babies rather than transplant this tissue back. So IVM is very important. And there are the uh, great advancement in growth the ovarian tissue and to accomplish the final maturation. So we will have another webinar in six weeks. We can discuss the only cop the topic is about the IVM. The old story adds old adds IVF, meaning in vitro maturation is a very old, important topic as in vitro fertilization. Thank you for this question. Let's go down to the next question. The next question is about, uh, do we use an electrofusion method to integrate the nucleus? That's another very good question. The, whoever the person read this question must be the expert in the nuclear transfer. And there are, there are two different kind of approaches to integrate the transfer the DNA materials into the host egg. Doesn't matter it's a, a geminovascular stage egg. Doesn't matter it's a mantle phase one stage egg. Doesn't matter it's a mantle phase two egg or it's a fertilized egg or zygotes. You always have to deal with the, the last part of the process that allow the DNA, DNA material to integrate into the egg. Just for the audience who are not familiar with the nuclear transfer, why can't you just inject this nuclear material into the egg like ICSI? Why you have to go through such a complicated way to allow this DNA contained material to be slowly integrated into the host of the egg? Because the size of the nuclear usually is about 15 to 25 micrometer, which is five times bigger than the diameter of the sperm head. If you use a, such a big pipette to inject this nuclear into the egg, the egg will be lysed and uh, degenerate right away. So you have to use in some kind of way, allow the membrane to fuse, to allow the transfer the DNA material to integrate into the host egg. There are two approaches, virus or virus protein, or use electrofusion. Virus is the easy way, clean way, easy way to perform, but it may not be very quote, quote, clean. And in the clinical case, the patient may not like the idea of their egg being material with the integration of a virus or even with the virus products. Secondly, while this is easy to fusion, our stay sure that it may not necessarily keep the quality of the egg as well as the second method, which is electrofusion. Electrofusion is much clean. You use a high 
voltage electric current within a very, very low period of time of almost like 0 0.03 seconds, which you basically you zap the egg and increase the fusion membrane. It's a clean method. And if you done properly, it's a very successful procedure, have a least effect on the egg. However, the shortcoming of electrofusion is number one. The condition is very hard to control with the patient have a very limited number of material. You probably don't have a luxury to test many times to find the right condition for the electrofusion. And number two, in certain stage of the egg, for example, at the metaphase two egg stage, you, if you want to do the nuclear transfer, the metaphase two egg is a highly active moving egg, very unstable. And electrofusion also rely on the influx of calcium, which we all know can activate the oocytes. So during the integration of the nuclear, the oocyte cytoplasma may be may be prematurely uh, activated. That definitely can compromise the integrity, the cell cycle of the eggs, and it may cause asynchronization of fertilization. It may increase the arrest of the embryo at the early stage. So this is a pros and cons of virus and electrofusion appro uh, approach. Again, this is a great question, the big topic. It's themselves uh, deserve to have a separate webinar. So if you are interested, please send your request. If we have enough audience, we'd like to further discuss about what might be the best way to integrate the nuclear into the host cell, which actually is a center part of the conversation and the key of the nuclear transfer. So we can have a webinar, and I really will uh, encourage uh, our colleagues around the world, if you are working on nuclear transfer, please join in. Let's have a panel discussion. Let's find five or six audience, and we can discuss uh, each uh, group, their experience, their difficulties. They will definitely help to further uh, improve the progress in this very important part of a nuclear transfer process. The key components of nuclear transfer, the integration of the transferred DNA into the host cell, how to use the virus, how to use electrofusion. Thank you for the two excellent questions. Have a wonderful day. Bye.